Hi, this is the advisor with Stacy Chalemi, and I'm the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I'm extremely excited because today I have Janet Walmsley, and she is an actress, and she has her wonderful daughter Jenny with her, and they have an amazing story to tell. And they are going to tell us a little about themselves and what they do. So, why don't we start with you, Janet? Why don't you tell everybody who you are and what you do, and we'll take we'll take it from there. And then, Jan Jenny, you can tell everybody about yourself and all the great things that you do too. Okay, great. Yeah, you got the two J's here from Canada. Two J's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. First of all, I want to thank you, Stacey, for having us. Uh, we really appreciate it. We've been looking very forward to this. Uh, again, my name is Janet Walmsley. Um, I, I live here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, but I originally am from Manitoba, uh, which is just just above North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota. So we sound very Minnesotan. Um, <laughs> I, I, I started out in in uh, in life where I, I after high school, I became a dental assistant hygienist. So I did that for 27 years of my life. I did in Manitoba. I lived in Yellowknife doing it. I lived in Germany doing it. Um, but also when I was young, though, I did acting. Um, I did a lot of plays, musical theater, um, started doing commercials, started doing um, modeling. And I remember I had the opportunity to go to uh, a couple of acting schools in Vancouver and Toronto. And I was accepted. But my parents said, no, that is not <laughs> a profession. So I went, what do you mean it's not a profession? So I was very hurt. But in the long run, it was good that I did <laughs> do that. Yeah. So how did I get into acting again? Well, I got into it later in life. I had become a single single mom to Jenny and her, her older brother. And it was my son who said, Mom, you're doing so much for me, so much for Jenny. And with her autism, he says, you got to do something for yourself. He said, yeah. look, there's a play here in the paper. Go audition. And I said, Christopher, I said, I'm 41 years old. I'm not going to go. <laughs> I said, I haven't done this since I was 17. I'm not going to go and go. I said, I'm not making a fool of myself. And he's got these Paul Newman blue, big blue eyes. He says, come on, mom, you got to go for it. Please do it for me and Jenny. So what do I do? Okay. And in my head, I'm going, are you nuts, Janet? So I went and auditioned and I booked the role. And uh, I did theater for almost 20 years where I acted in many yeah. plays. Yeah, many plays, um, even Shakespeare, which is, whoa, I love Shakespeare. Um, and then someone saw me on stage and said, you've got to get into film and TV. And I'm going, what? I said, film and TV? He goes, yeah, I want to introduce you to Talent Scout, who knows an agent from Vancouver. And I'm just going, what is going on here? So I ended up meeting this Talent Scout. And then I ended up getting introduced to this Vancouver agent. And that's where it's been. So I do film, I do TV, I've done commercials, I've done voiceovers. I actually was um, nominated for Best Supporting Actress for Comedy um, yeah. in LA. Yeah, thank you. A couple You're of years welcome. back for, uh, for a series. I And, and then I've been... Um, I've just been very fortunate and, and this is why I've sort of extended out my acting as well, where I coach actors. I also, uh, have an acting class, which is nice. called shifting lanes, which is for actors, 35, 40 and up these, I, I wanted to pay it forward because a lot of people, when they get older, they retire, think, Oh, I would have loved to have been an actor. I wonder if I should give it a try. And then some don't. And right. then they regret it when they're in their 80s, 90s, going, why didn't I go try? You're never too, too old. You're never too old to go into acting or anything else. Writing I love a book. That. I wrote my book later in life, too. I never thought I'd write a book. So that's what I do. I teach this class called Shifting Lanes. And it's for people who are older who want to get into acting or background actors who want to cross over to speaking roles. Or theater actors who want to cross over to to film and TV. So yeah, I have been very for, and I'm also a talent scout for the agency that I'm on their roster. So I just maybe I guess some recent things. I I'm on Virgin River. I play Mrs. Gardner. Um, I met you and McGregor when I was on Fargo, um, the third season. Who he came up and had a very nice chat with me, and we had a great time. Um, and I also did Sandra Bullock's movie, The Unforgiven. I played the lead boy's uh, mother. Uh, so I've I've done so once upon a time. So I I've been doing I've been doing a lot. And I I just was wow. in a a movie or film that was at Toronto International Film Festival um, that did very well. It just won the BC Festival for Best Film of BC and Director. Congratulations! And I just did I've just 
I'm always doing auditions. So, so I've been very fortunate and I'm very grateful for that. But then on the other hand, I've also had this lovely journey and experience with my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the reason why, and I'll just show you here, this is the reason why I wrote this book. It's an award-winning book and it's called The Autistic Author and Animator. And it's about my daughter's journey with autism, but through a mother's eyes, through my eyes. I wrote this book like you're sitting across the coffee table from you yeah. because it wants to be very real and natural. But I give everything from when I first found out to at the very to where she is now, although it's a couple of years old, the book. So she's got even further, you know, with things that she does for her autism. Yeah. But I felt it very um, not necessary, but I really wanted to share my passion, my love. And I wrote this book for the autistic community to give parents, to give siblings to their autistic child, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a Definitely. rainbow of colors. Life, your life doesn't stop. There's a beautiful journey that's ahead of you. You yes. just have to think of it as a positive one. Yes. Did we go through trials and tribulations through this journey? Yes. But did we have major triumphs? for sure. And that's what I want to relate. Not everybody's story is the same, which is why in the future, all these people that we meet through speaking engagements, through book signings we have, where we're known as the book signing queens, um, I want to correlate to them that every journey is different. Every level of autism that their child has is different. But why not take each child, never pushing them, I never pushed right. you, but to their peak where they yeah. can reach. They deserve as much a rich, fulfilled life as as any of us right. and then I also wrote it for the general public because I wanted the general public to really get an eyeful of what one family went through and what they did with autism I had a lady from the states mm -hmm. I've actually she's from New York she got a hold of me she bought my book just bought it she didn't have anybody with autism or family but really didn't know too much about autism bought it she said she couldn't put it down read it the whole flight back back home and said, oh my God, I've got a whole new enlightenment, an eye opener on autism. I had a very stigma type of feeling or thought about it. And she says, and I want to do a Jenny. I said, pardon me. She said, I want to do what Jenny did with what you and her did with her life with autism with my own life. Because I've always let fear, I've always let obstacles, I've always let barriers get in my way. Yes. So that I couldn't push and, and do what I really wanted to do. So she thanked us. So now, this is someone from the general public, someone who had nothing with autism. And then with our book signings and speaking engagements, I have a lot of people who have come up to us. Your book has given us hope. We have a life now in front of us, not only for their child, but for themselves. Right. And I write about siblings too, because siblings go through it as much as what the parents do and the individual with autism. We have books on your speaking engagements. I beeline to siblings. So <laughs> I went on, but there, that's a little bit about, about moi. <laughs> and you, Jenny, tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, so uh, um, I, hello, I'm Jenny Story. Um, I was born in Canada. I was diagnosed autistic at the age of three. And though I did struggle a bit in elementary and high school I was able to pass with good grades and got even like some um, degrees um, so that I could go to my Vancouver film school for 2D and 3D animations because my dreams were to become a 2D or well, an animator in general because I've yeah. always loved animation yeah. and so I got I got accepted Vancouver film school for both um, the classical animation 2D for about a year and then the digital character design which was more uh, focused on 3D animation and all that and that one took about cool. a year and a half yeah thank you and then after that um I also I also wrote a book uh fantasy sci-fi YA oh mom wants to be the show oh, yeah I definitely show it. Yeah. I want to see it that's yeah. the first it's a trilogy yeah that's oh, the first nice. one and this is the second one. It's showing the oh, difference. congratulations. <laughs> wow. Thank you. I'm writing the third one on it now. But um, yeah, so I uh, uh, offer as well. And my mom and I have been doing um, mother-daughter book signing events together over the years. And, and being autistic, I also try to advocate for autism and show like the beauty side of it in that 
as my mom, it doesn't have to end your life. It can be the end of the rainbow. There's positivity and we can bring things to help with the community that we're not useless. Right. Um, yeah. And then I do some background work for fun at times. Background too. acting. Yeah. Background acting. And yeah. Oh, that's and, awesome. Yeah. And that, 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 that's my life. Uh, short and sweet. And, and Jenny's very humble. She did win an award just recently. Oh. The, um, BC Self-Advocate Award, which Excellent. is for advocation. And she's actually been starting to talk with people and getting things organized for a pitch. She would like to make either movies of her trilogy books yeah. or TV series. So that's yeah. something where we're that she wants to look into as one as, as well. One of her oh, goals. Very exciting. <laughs> yeah, that's something I would like to do too, because I think people can learn from stories. I have epilepsy, you have autism. We go through these these amazing life stories, and especially when you are able to succeed and get to the end of the rainbow, it's it's an amazing accomplishment. And I think it gives people so much hope. I say faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope. If you can have those things in your life, then you can do anything. And I think when people do like, if you do a do a um a, a short TV show, or if you do a little movie and you tell about your life story and you, you show your accomplish, accomplishments and you show how you overcame your obstacles, that can inspire and motivate someone so much, you know, because I feel people when they are diagnosed with something, or even if they were diagnosed at childhood and they have to go through life with an illness, a condition or a disease, it's a very trying time. It's, 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 you know, you go through anger, depression, denial, you know, you go through, you know, you go through a lot of obstacles in life and, you know, some, a lot of people tend to want to give up, you know, what made you not want to give up? What gave you the strength to keep going and going and going and try to better yourself? Oh gosh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> how do I explain it? Because yeah, with, um, being autistic I, I did get bullied in school and that would be hard and yeah I guess um I just try to I just try to not as best even with my insecurities not let people get to me because at the end of the day when people bully or pick on you it's really their own insecurities and they just 100%. take it out on you yes and so and I try, I try to focus um on so, cause I kind of have this poster where it says, learn your ABCs or no, sorry. Remember, to remember your ABCs. And it just talks about, goes through the whole alphabet about things to focus on, like trying to stay positive, believing in yourself and surrounding yourself with people who do love and accept you and understand you for who you are. And just trying to focus and be optimistic on that. And, you know, just keep going and not letting people tell you what I can I, and can or can't do through the good and bad days so I guess yeah. yeah I just want to say with the bullying poor Jen she went through some major stuff and I know a lot of people people do and and the thing was that she would come every day to the van not every day but a lot of days crying yeah and there's some major stuff where mama bear here had to get into the school I'm so thankful that Jenny was able to tell me about them but the thing about this was, even though she went through that bullying, this young woman knew what she wanted. She wanted to be an animator. She wanted to write books, fantasy fiction books. So she went to that school every day, knowing what she was up against. I always said that Jenny trucked through the, the trenches of bullying, climbed up the slippery mountain slopes of academics, yeah, and then jumped on top and became an animator and then jumped into the clouds and became an author of these best-selling, which has got quite a following of her fantasy fiction book, Dysnomia. And there is a beautiful documentary because I'm just going off of what you said, Stacey, which was awesome. There's a beautiful documentary about Jenny mm -hmm. and another young adult. And it's how they went through their life with autism and where they're at now and living their dreams. And it's such an inspiration um, to share their stories and bring it to the fore. So both the gender public and autistic communities can do that. And that's what I want to do. We've I've wrote my book now about our journey and I've been talking to a lot of other parents or signings or events. And I want to get a book and each paragraph is about a different family and their journey and giving the insight of what they've gone through in their journey with autism. I did that with my book with Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. That was one of the first books I wrote and it was it became a bestseller. And it was 
I personally, I did not know if I was going to get through college because I was having so many seizures. So what I did mm. was is I wrote to the Epilepsy Foundation in America and they had a magazine back then. And I said, how do you cope with epilepsy? Can you please, you know, I wrote an article. I said, can you please publish this? And three to 400 letters from all of the United States and Canada came to my house and it was people with epilepsy wow. and they talked about how they cope with epilepsy. And I mm. put those in the book. And I think yeah, that itself yeah. gave people so much inspiration. It was people from all over the place or from different families, different viewpoints, different, different, yeah. growing, different ways of growing up, different cultures. And they all explained how they coped with the condition. And I think yeah. that would be so inspiring because it, it gave me inspiration. I think that was one of the things that drew me to actually, you know, feel like I had the, the ability and the strength to get through it. If all these people could do it, so can I. And I think too, making them people understand that they're not alone. How many people alone. have autism? Think about it. Yeah. The statistics are insane. How many? Oh, it is are... doubled. It has, it has doubled. It is, it is tripled. And you took the words right out of my mouth. It gives them inspiration it gives them the strength. It gives them the endurance. Yeah. So in what you did with your epilepsy is parallel to what I want to do with autism, because I've seen what just our story has done for so many families and parents and adult autistic individuals to look at Jenny. Yeah. But if we had like what you did, which is phenomenal, then we could reach out to even more of autistic families even more because there still is a stigma um yes, with autism uh, in the school system there's see, i don't know about it yeah and i don't know if it's the same in the states but uh, I, in canada i still have a lot of parents coming up to me i had one woman come up to me and she said to me janet <laughs> she said i ended up having to take my daughter out what had happened was is the finance, the finances, the amount that was supposed to be given to her daughter to mm -hmm. help with her in school, to help with her with learning, they dispersed it throughout the school. They uh. didn't, there was very little given to her daughter. Then I had another woman say, and she says, I wasn't being aggressive. I wasn't being mean, but she had to be there for her daughter because what was supposed to be, be done with the learning assistance, education assistance, it wasn't being done. Right. And she, all she was doing, she was being there voicing for her daughter who couldn't very well. Mm -hmm. And she was, she, her and her daughter were taken out of school. Her daughter was taken out of the school. And it just doesn't seem fair. And I have teachers talking to me who are saying, the reason why we strike sometimes is because we've got 30 odd kids in our class. Some of them are autistic, some are ADHD, some are, you know, Down syndrome, whatever. And how can we give them the quality time for the way autistics learn differently? They just learn differently. They're very intelligent, extremely, extremely. intelligent. They, they usually have a higher so intelligence than anybody. Oh, yeah. So Their let IQ them learn. Goes over the roof. Right. And more let than the learn. average individual. Exactly. So That's let cool. them learn the way that they learn. But the thing is, the school system isn't doing this. And I always say this and people just laugh at me because I go, you know, they pay, and I should say this because I'm an actor, but they pay these, these sports players, they play these actors, all these outrageous things of money. And although I know sports people and actors do help out with organizations and that, but come on, you know, where is the money for, for all these different people that have autism and epilepsy that, that, that have you know, or, or any kind of condition or, or disability, you know, condition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I feel that, you know, one of the things when I, when I'm on the adversary board for Synovian pharmaceuticals and the first topic we ever talked about was the stigmatism of conditions because it, it is, it is prevalent in our society. People think because you have, if you say you have a condition right away, people put a stigmatism on that person. So therefore that person is afraid to say, I have autism, I have epilepsy, I have, you know, whatever the case may be, because they are be afraid of being judged and thinking that that person is going to think they're less qualified oh. than they actually are. And yeah. that 
comes from a lack of education in our society. Sure. Our society, sure. but, you know, we talk about, you know, and I'm sure it's the same in Canada and Toronto. I'm, we talk, you know, we have plenty of information on the internet about, about conditions and the symptoms, the conditions, the causes, the treatments, the blah, blah, blah. But yeah. where are, is the information on how to cope with it? What it is, how caretakers can cope with it, how teachers need to cope with it, how people in our society and our workforce need to cope with it. You know, these, this even people awesome. in the medical system and even people medical like system, police, yes. police, Police, and because police there are also. some horrendous stories I hear that have happened to even very young children where police have mishandled them and have been very forceful, forceful with them. And I understand that's the difference where some autistics are very in your face. They can be very aggressive, but there are other autistics. The, um, policemen, they need to be educated, even the medical system. And, you yes. know, I remember when I first um when I first saw something was wrong with Jenny, because Jenny's 29 now. So this was 26 years ago. And when I knew, I just knew something was wrong with Jenny. And I remember I went to this, we'd lived in Yellowknife, the Northwest Territories. And we moved down to the Okanagan, which is about six hours from Vancouver. We see where we live now. But I remember when I was trying to explain to the general practitioner, he just looked at me. And the way he talked to me, he made me feel like an overboard, over neurotic, overbearing mother. And he said, well, we could do another hearing test. It's just her hearing. She's just two years old. She's just having problems. And I went to this hearing test. We couldn't even do the hearing test because her five senses, she just couldn't do it. Yeah. So you know what I did? I went back to him and I sat in his office, got another point, and I sat there, wasn't aggressive. And I'd never been an assertive person, but I became assertive. I just sat there and he walked in. It was just like, oh, it's her again. And I just <laughs> sat there and I said, I said, I said, I am not leaving. I didn't even go Canadian and say, I'm sorry. I said, I am not leaving until I have an appointment for my daughter to see a pediatrician. And he just looked at me. It's almost like the roll of the eyes, but he knew I wasn't leaving. Right. I got an appointment. It was the best thing I ever did. We saw a pediatrician. She wasn't even with Jenny for five minutes and she already knew. You know, so I mean, you have to be an advocate for your child or for yourself. Yeah. And I know what Jenny sometimes uh, I remember, remember when you first went to VFS, she was she didn't tell anybody you didn't tell anybody you were autistic, did you? No, I didn't. Because as you mentioned before, I was afraid of once I mentioned autism. Oh, the stigma is going to be calling. Everybody's just going to like, you know, think me of me different and treat me different because autism is like not seen as great. I think we're getting better as seeing as a little better but there's still people out there who think oh it's a bad thing and so they think better of you and I wanted people to like and accept me for who I'm not I am not just think of me oh that autistic person and, and you know the funny thing was we had our first book signing and all our buddies came from animation school and they're looking at Jenny's books oh because they were so happy for her that she was going to get her fantasy picture book published and yeah. then they look at my book and they see Jenny on the cover with me and they first thought I was autistic. And, <laughs> and then Jenny kind of looked at him and I said, and then I just said, I said, Jenny, it's time to come out. <laughs> I said, <laughs> and then they realized Jenny was autistic and they went, really? We, we thought she was just the quiet, shy, the shy one in yeah. the corner. <laughs> uh. and, and the thing was, Jenny was diagnosed at three with extremely low functioning autism, where she wasn't, wouldn't talk. She would just grunt and push you. Her yeah. senses to every sense, sound, light, um, no, just touch, taste. She would eat the same thing for just about years, months. Right. And, and then I, I would have to calm her. If we ever went out of routine, like we went down the wrong aisle, well, aisle in the grocery store or we didn't go the right stepping on the stones to to the park when we went to the little lake that we live by right. I mean the fits the fits the fits were on and I had to take you know give her baths where you look at her now and people who worked with her before you they look at her now and Jenny now is extremely high functioning now the thing yeah. with high functioning autistic individuals is sometimes you don't think of them autistic because it's very subtle yeah. But I know. And then after right. people get to know Jenny a bit or talk to a bit, then they, you know, they, they know something's there, but it's not, you know, a lot of autistics are very flat toned when they talk. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I just look at where Jenny's come to where she is now. And you're always so proud of your child. Yes. But I got to say for Jenny, I'm proud, but I'm very happy for her. 
because she's living and doing what she wanted to do. And I, I feel she's a role model and inspiration, not only for the autistic community, but I think for each and every one of us, because as her mom, and, and we've become best friends, I've learned, and I'm sure you find that with your kids, but I've, um, I've learned so much from her. Right. Now, did you notice, like, she started as a low-functioning autistic person, and then she she grew to a high-functioning autistic individual. Was there anything you were doing to help her? Maybe that you, a parent that has an autistic child, you know, is there any advice you can give them to try to enhance their child from low-functioning to high-functioning? Thank you. Stacy's good. I'm so <laughs> glad you asked this. You you understand. Um, yes. Uh, what I can say is I, and I, re- I write this in my book, I was fortunate. I had the dream team. Mm-hmm. So when I talk to parents nowadays or, you know, since I found out Jenny was, was autistic, one of the things is don't let anybody set your child aside. Don't let, don't let yourself go through the cracks because There is support there. And sometimes you got to really dig for it. I even had to go past the support that we had in your BC. I went to a place called the Autism Center. It's in Sheffield, Massachusetts. Check it out if you're in the States there or or Canada, or they take everybody in the world, um, where they have done absolute wonders with autistic children. And they had an autistic child themselves, and they had a movie about it. And there's a, they had a tape and everything. It's called Sunrise, the Miracle Continues. Mm-hmm. And I, what happened was I took what they gave me because I couldn't go there. It was too expensive, right. but I got this dream team and my dream team consisted of um, a play therapist okay. where we did the fair play because the number one thing for me, for Jenny, what I hear other parents say, they'll get through the endemics. Maybe they have to learn different, but they'll get through that. But yeah. socialization is the number one thing that is hard for autistic individuals. Yes. Like yes. I was talking previously, some are very in your face. Some don't know boundaries. Jenny, on the other hand, was very shy. She was very introverted. Yes. Socialization, this fair play taught them how to converse with others, how to respect others, how to distance, how to um, how to handle letting others play with you. Jenny was very in a bubble. If you ever tried to take anything out of her out of her routine, how she'd line things up, or you tried to play with something she was playing with. She didn't want that. She didn't want to be around other people. She didn't right. like the socialization. So therapy play was very good. And horse, horse therapy was really good. It's amazing how horse therapy, riding a horse, the connection, the chemistry between a horse and a child. And then Jenny learned how to respect the horse. She learned how to talk. There was just like the horse whisper going, going on there. So there's that. Speech therapy, um, extremely important. We had the greatest speech pathologist who worked with, with, with Jenny and worked with me to work with Jenny and everything that she did in learning how for Jenny to talk. Visual cues, visual aids, visual cards, because Jenny learned um, visual. We yeah. had a psychologist, psychiatrist who worked with the mindset of Jenny to help her with things, with the sensitivities. And he yeah. worked with me as well. The play therapist worked with me. The speech therapist worked with me. And then our daycare. <laughs> it was like I'd hit a gold mine. These women, their unconditional love for Jenny, their understanding, they would go to autism workshops and courses with me. And the teachers, the learning assistants, I made sure that I was there. I made sure that Jenny was getting what she was supposed to, but they understood that this is a loving and caring mom who wanted to be there for her child. Right. Their daughters deserve this. And what the intertwining twist here, every single person, and there's more to like respite care workers, every single person that was working with Jenny was working with me too. They always included me as a parent because they felt a parent they felt a parent knows exactly what's going on with their child. And as a parent, you've got to know and understand everything that they're doing in each avenue, professional, daycare, schooling, so that you can carry that on at home. Yes. And they were so loving and, and so caring for me and for our family that we're best friends with them all. When we go to the Okanagan, we get together, we, we stay with them. But there's another thing, parents, I want you because I wasn't going to take this as, at first. And this is respite care. I don't know if it's given in the States. I know it's given here. Respite care is for the parent. And I didn't want it at first because I didn't think anybody could look after Jenny like I was doing. 
But I remember the head of respite said, well, Janet, how can you give yourself, which is you give plenty to her if you're mentally and physically burnt out? Exactly. So what respite get, did, it gave me 28 to 30 hours where I'd have four hours each time where I could just have a sleep because it's a 24 hour job when you have yeah. a little you know, autistic child. And, and then you could have time to be with an adult, have four hours with a friend or have a chance to go four hours to do grocery shopping or shopping without your child having to fit. And I mean, you understood going, yeah. you know, when you're trying to go down an aisle, you go down a different, different aisle. But you know what it also did? It was a gold mine for Jenny because Jenny got to learn how to be with another person. And she got to learn to the point where I had two beautiful respite caregivers who were now, they're like family, that Jenny ended up going for sleepovers as she got older, you know, Excellent. she was definitely older. Yeah. So Jenny learned how to communicate. Jenny learned how to socialize. She learned how to be in a different environment because that was very hard for her. Very right. hard for her to go outside of the house, um, go to places because everything, the five senses and just being in the public it bothered her, but I couldn't enable her. I had to let that be. She had to know that she had to be outside. So the respite care was was very, very, very good. Um, and I, 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 I understood now and why it was a, a very positive to do it, not only for myself, but mm -hmm. also it's it's very positive for your 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 child as well. And here's just a little something for siblings. Um, I can't do this without crying. Jenny has an older brother, Chris. Mm -hmm. And Chris is 13 years older than Jenny. And what a protective brother. What a brother that he he never got jealous. He knew, and this is something you have to explain to your children, to the other children in your life, if you have a, a sibling there for, with a child with autism. But he never, he knew that I had to spend more time with her. Not right. that I didn't spend time with him or there for him, but he knew that. So yeah. what, so um, he became almost like the father, the brother, you know, everything. Yeah. But it's important for a sibling to know that it isn't because you don't want to be there for him. They've got to understand, they've got to understand what's going on with their sibling as well. Right. And this is this, this short little story I'm going to tell you. I had to get Jenny out and I wanted to take Christopher out for supper and he liked going to a place called White Spot here. And so we took him to White Spot. Uh, we brought Jenny with us. We brought her favorite toys, her favorite blanket and everything. And it was in there. It was kind of loud. The lights are on. There are people around us. And Jenny, sorry, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny started having her fit. And her fits were unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, she's nose diving under the, under the table. Well, the looks we were getting and the murmuring and the looks were not nice. Yeah. And Christopher looked at me and then we ordered and our supper came and Christopher looked at me and he said, mom, just, just eat your supper. Right. And what Christopher did is he went underneath and spent time with Jenny and, and then people, you know, were still watching and all of a sudden you see his hand come up, grab a chicken McNugget and yeah. bring it back down for her. And as she started uh -huh. to settle, he came back up and he put her on his lap. And he just was comforting her and he was giving me a space of time because he knew how much I had to do that with her and being there and being there for his sister. And right. let me tell you, Stacy, there was a hush all around us, a hush. And I had one woman look at me. Mm, here I go. And she went like this on her heart. And, she smiled. and I just looked at her and I went. And I just. smile back so this is uh, a very cherished moment that I take of a sibling of my son who is not only there for sisters there for me but he was putting something out there um, yeah. for people and I understand some people don't know about autism they don't know your child's autistic when they're having issues I had an older couple in Safeway Jenny was had a really bad fit and they came up to me and they said you're a really bad parent and this is <gasps> a child yeah and I was almost in tears and I was saying but my child's autism but autistic and she can't help it and I just felt so bad for Jenny so yeah. I finally after a while I quit I quit saying anything um you know because but I, I but I understand I understand but that's hard so in a <laughs> long story short that's what I can give to um autistic parents and I, I talk a lot about it in my I, my books too because it's not easy going. Let me tell no. you, there's a beautiful journey you go on to with it all. 
I think, you know, I, I, I get upset when I see people make judgments on other individuals, because until you walked in through somebody's shoes, until you understand the situation that they're in, what gives you the right to judge? You know, I feel like when, like we said earlier in the conversation, when people make judgments on upon other people, it's to avoid themselves. It's very easy to point out the, the, the flaws you might think are in other individuals, but those are the people that yeah. don't want to look at themselves, you know, and those are the people that have a list long of things probably wrong with themselves. But, you know, nobody yes. has the right to make judgments on another individual because you don't know what the person's going through. You don't know what their life is like. You don't know what the situation is, you know, and, and I think the world needs to stop making judgments on other individuals. That's one oh, thing I sure. think a message we need to really get across to people is stop judging other individuals. Focus on yourself, yeah. focus on your own life, focus on what makes you happy as a, a person and stop looking at other people and stop judging other people because you don't know what's really going on. So how dare you exactly. make judgment on an other individual and their family or them or their child, or whatever the case may be. You know, people have to start. Yeah. Right. Just because we live in a free country does not give us the right to say things if it's going to put harm or it's, it's going to hurt another individual emotionally or physically. Living in a free country does not mean you have the right to do and say everything you want to do. That's why we have laws. That's why we have restrictions. And the same should go with your mouth. You should never say something. No. If it's going to hurt the other individual emotionally and it cause and even cause, you know, the hurt um, physically, because a lot of times we were talking about bullying. People have committed suicide, yeah. young individuals oh, and yeah, yes. because yes. of the bullying, the cyber bullying, the bullying in school. Yeah. Kids have really yeah. given up on themselves, you know? So really there has to be, you know, some thought process. And bullying, bullying is and bullying is, yeah, and bullying is 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 really big time. Like I said, Jenny went through a lot of it, and I I did um a movie a, a film a couple of years back on also bullying in the workplace for for adults. Like it's yeah. it's 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 in both areas, and it's and I know with Jenny there was one one event uh, with her bullying. Oh my gosh, I won't talk about it because it's just too much. But yeah. Um, I remember uh, when I went, uh, I, I said, we have to confront this individual. I says, I want this girl in, in this, this, um, this room right now. Right. Um, and I wasn't going to attack her or anything like that, but what she did to Jenny, it's just not, I tell you, it wasn't normal. Like it was, it was really okay. severe. It was not yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and um, when, and I said, and I would like your parents here too. Um, because Jenny told me this after school and I mean, she was really, and I thought, what is going on here? So the parents wouldn't come. The parents would come. So they leave their daughter there alone and, and realizing afterwards, but I couldn't let her think what she did was right because it was vicious. It was yeah, horrible. Yeah. You just don't do, I just couldn't believe it was like even, that. she right. did it. Um, and then um, she was going through stuff at home. So what she was doing, bringing stuff, she was at home mm -hmm. and then bring it to school. And Jenny was the one that she knew she was easy to pick on. Yeah. Jenny was a bit shy, a little bit quiet. Um, Jenny wouldn't hurt a fly, you know, and, and, and the thing is she, she knew that, Yeah. but the thing was, she was going through, through stuff as well, because evidently her parents didn't seem to care. They weren't right. working or anything. They just, they didn't want to come. But meanwhile, they've got a daughter who's done something very severe, um, you know, and, 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 and that's what I mean with bullying. You just, um, you never know, but it does not give her the right to do that. Yeah. It does not give the right to those people to come up and talk to me about that, about my child right. and the way those people are murmuring all around you in the restaurant and every other thing that, you know, that you go through, but not, none of us should be bullied. No. We all have our quirks. I think all of us have a bit of autism. In Everybody this. Like has a little bit of autism. In there. Yes. <laughs> we all have a, we all have a bit of quirkiness in this. We all have, yes. have, have something, but I mean, the world has turned into a really sometimes there are a lot of beautiful things out there. A lot of beautiful, kind people there, but boy, does there need to be a sweep of, of, of getting the kindness back of getting the love and to yes. talk to people yes. on your phone. You know, there's, there's got to be kindness. There's got to be more love. There's so much hatred. There's so much self-centeredness. Yes. There's, there's, you've got to reach out and be there for one another. Um, in, in, basically in every different avenue.
Yeah. And I, I wrote a book on kindness and I talk about it even in my journal at the positivity and gratitude journal, because you know what, we really need to have gratitude because people get forget that, you know, there are a lot of things in their lives they should be have gratitude for, you know, people think about what they don't have. Stop thinking about what you don't have and start being, having gratitude for what you do have, you know, and then you will have a different perspective on life and you, that positivity oh. will start to shine, you know, yeah. and and I, you know, I wanted to ask you, Jenny, was it the positivity being po the power of pos positive thinking that really got you through everything? Because I feel like the power of positivity really goes a, a long way for people who struggle with different conditions. Oh, for sure. I, exactly like what you said, uh, I, uh, which is another thing, trying to focus on the good things that I did have versus what I didn't have. Because when you do focus, like when you do focus on the things that you do have that are good in your life, you know, it does make life easier and better. And you use that focus and positive, be more optimistic and be more fearless. And yeah, things like that help for sure. And that's definitely what helps me get through the day. And did you, do you ever feel like you fell into depression at some points? Because sometimes it could be really drawn, you know, when you go through a lot of obstacles you feel like sometimes you're getting beat up and it's like, how much can I get knocked down? You know, it's like, I always felt like every time I got two steps forward, I got knocked back three steps. And it was like, how many times do you keep struggling to move forward and you keep getting knocked back and you just, you, you have to, you know, you, you have to keep that amount of strength in you to keep on moving forward. What made you not fall? Did you fall into depression? And if you did, how did you get back up and out of it? You know, and how did you move forward to get to the accomplishments that you you've achieved today? Oh, for, oh, yeah, definitely. For sure. I definitely had my moments where I was depressed and sad and just kind of wanted to give up life and not do anything and just isolate myself in a sense, because you know, the paid and some things people said to me, and it's like, okay, well, if nobody wants me around, why bother? Right. And, yeah. And so, yeah, things like that were hard, like, and yeah, and people, you know, come and go, say many things or just, um, I what got you through it? What gave you the strength to say, screw that? I'm not going to let it get me down. I'm going to move forward. Um, I think with me getting, older has kind of helped in this sense because I think I'm just getting to the point where it's like you know what I I know who I am as a human being and if people are not going to accept me for who I am then forget them there's like I mentioned before there's people who do love me or dare for me my mom was definitely a help for that and you know reaching out and talking to people who I felt like were there for me and them just talking through it and them being there for me helped and just just being open and try to be myself as best as I can it's not always easy there are yeah. days when I do struggle but I just try to fight it because if I don't then I let them win and it's right. not okay exactly and I think for Jenny too um it's uh you know, you, oh, that geez, was no. that was nicely put. Jenny. I it think for Jenny too. I, yes. Oh, thank you. I think having the love of her family around, uh, myself, her brother, and also the 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 friends of Jenny that have have engulfed Jenny for who she is and yes. love her for who she is, and the unconditional love of everybody that worked with her. Like Jenny really felt that. She really felt like you know Lynn and Lucy and mm -hmm. and uh, Deb and Gail and you know the people that that worked with her. I mean they they care about her so much and they they're still all around her her today. And then she has her friends from animation. She gets together with her. She's like some of her friends are getting together for a Halloween time or something on yeah. Zoom all together because they live in in another area. Right, but. And I, I uh, and, and even the autistic community of people she's getting to meet that are autistic, like we have the Pacific Autism Center here, right. she's done videos with them with other autistic people, she's yeah. got to know other autistic people where they go out and do stuff, but then she's got friends that who aren't autistic who she's out with. So right. I think there's a conglomeration of family, of friends, of professionals who have worked with her, who have become like family. But number one, I think for Jenny, what I've always tried to instill in her or let her know is that I believe in her. Uh, I trust in her. I'm confident in her. I'm, and I wanted her. 
for that for her own self-esteem yeah. even with what she was going through I wanted her to believe in herself I wanted to in her in herself and I've really really seen that come through as she like what you even said Jenny as she's gotten gotten older she should be very proud of herself because oh, she's definitely. really had to battle through a lot yeah. and sh- look at if i had listened right jenny if yeah. i listened to those oh, people yeah, say right. to you oh she's never gonna talk she's never gonna do well in school she's never gonna wear her peers are she's never she's never gonna do this she's never gonna do that what and i just walked out of there and said bleak. yeah and yeah that's what i said and i just walked out of there and said that's not gonna happen yeah here she is you can't let what other people say um, have an impact on you. It's what you believe and what you think. And like you said, the number one thing is support. You know, whether it be family, friends, people in the workforce, having support is very big. And even, you know, I say reach out to advocate groups, reach out to support groups, make friends and and realize that you're not alone, that there are people there who love and care about you no matter what. And, you know, and it's not it's not quantity, it's quality. You know, when I, feel, oh, yeah, I yeah. want, I want to make sure that the people who I care about and care about me, I, I want those people behind me because they're going to dive to catch me. If I fall, the other people are exactly. just let me fall down to the ground because they don't want to get a scratch on them. So it's not quantity. You know, you don't want those acquaintances. You want quality friends, quality people in your life that are going to love you no matter what, that don't care what you have. They just love you for you you and they value the person inside you because it's not what we are on the outside it's what we are in the inside and it all is in the heart and that's where it yes. all begins you know and that, it, that's so true and, so, and it is it's, it, i always say to her why don't even don't even because that's like having a negative aura around you you want to have a positive aura. you want people who respect you yes. who love you for who you are and these people don't i because I, I at one point used to be a people pleaser and i said jenny we don't people please because I because if those people don't if they're going to act like that around you or be like that around you or bully around you they're not worth having around you they're going to make you both mentally and physically stressed they're not it sounds no I mean not nice but it's not worth it no put people around you that really do care like what you you hit the nail on the head Stacey exactly what you said put people around you that give you positivity that give you love that give you respect that that actually listen to you take time to listen to you and you do that back you know you give respect you give yeah. love you give and you know number one number one love yourself yes <laughs> love Big. yourself because yeah. that is so important i think so many people who have issues within themselves is for some reason they're not whatever their reason is they're not loving themselves oh, it's 100%. very important to love yourself yeah. I feel like I feel like the first thing is is the denial stage where you have to learn to be not be in denial. Okay, I have autism. Yes, I have autism and I'm going to have it the rest of my life and don't be in denial. Don't make believe you don't have it. Accept that you have it. And once you accept that you have it, then you learn to love yourself because you've accepted who you are. You got to get to the point where you could look in the mirror in the morning and you love the person you see. And that's the self love part. And that is so important. And then having building your self esteem, which you have done. And I could see it just by talking to you, Jenny, that you have oh. self esteem and, and oh, believing you. in yourself. It's believing and, and it's loving yourself that, that brings that self-esteem out. And once you have self-esteem, you're going to feel like you can conquer the world. And you have, because you wouldn't have done all the things you've done if you didn't have self-esteem. Because people who don't have self-esteem think themselves as worthless and they don't do things for themselves and they don't better themselves. So you have a hundred percent self-esteem and I give you kudos for that. And it, you know, and it's, and it's about, you know, getting to the place where you, you've gotten, and now you're giving back, you know, and people respect that. I respect yeah. that. And I, yeah. I, I commend you for that. And it's funny because her, when you, when you hear, yeah. And it's funny how, yeah. you know, the ironic yeah. part of it is when the specialist said she'll never be where her peers are. And now some of her peers are saying, you should go back to that specialist because you <laughs> passed us. You're a 2D, 3D animator. You're yeah. a you're a best-selling author and, and following of Dysnomia, your truly book, and you're a background actor. Like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> so, but she does that because she loves all that. But it really yeah. can give you know, um, inspiration to other people who, oh. who want to you do so. And remember when you got asked um, if you could 
we talked oh. about this before Stacey, you see wave the magic wand yeah have your eyes go away do you remember what you said to, in that interview do you remember yeah. and I, I was honest like it I was like if I was probably younger I probably would have said yes because I wanted to belong and not feel like an old cat right. but as I've gone over the years I would uh, say no I wouldn't change anything about me because I wouldn't be the person I am today and right. do all this wonderful accomplished amazing things if it if I wasn't autistic, it's a part of who I am. Yes. And I think having a disability, having a condition, having an illness or even a disease makes you look at life differently because you appreciate what you have. You appreciate the life that you you have because you start to value it more and you start to have gratitude for the good things that you have because you have to focus on the positivity in order to survive any type of condition. And you start to really start to look at things differently and you have compassion for others because now you understand what others go through. Every Everybody has something in this world. And that's what people have to realize. Nobody in this world is perfect. Perfection, that word does not exist. Everybody has something. So you need to look at everybody with eyes of compassion and you need to love those people and look at them for the goodness that they, that brings through their eyes, the, the shine and bright light that comes through their eyes. You need to value everybody and everybody has something special about them. Everybody has something in life. You know, we all carry our own flaws. We have different conditions, whether it be stress, anxiety, diabetes, whatever the case may be, invisible disorders and disabilities. You know, you can't, you have to really, you know, I look at people, I look at people with compassion and love, you know, and that's how everybody should look at people with compassion and love. Because like you said, we were talking about the magic wand. If I didn't have my epilepsy, if I, if, you know, when I was young, I probably would have said the same thing as you. I probably would wh wh whack that magic wand around <laughs> and say goodbye epilepsy, you know, but that having a disability, you know, made me who I am today. I said, you know, I'd probably be in New York having martinis on a Friday night and buying design <laughs> pocketbooks and, and high heel shoes, you know, and, and living the good life, you know, and taking my education and my, all my degrees and going sky high, but my epilepsy took me on a totally different road. Yes. And it yeah. really, you know, I like the road that I'm on. I love helping people. I enjoy, you know, the, you know, being able to bring, you know, self-achievement and self-love to other people. And you, I'm sure you feel the same way that, you know, if you could help one person with autism, you probably feel so accomplished. And, and that's probably the best thing that you could feel is when you help another person. And you know, it's funny you should say that, right? Because when I, um, when I was going to write this book, because when I was asked to write this book, I, I, <laughs> Never written a book before I said oh okay um but when I before I wrote it I did ask Jenny if it was okay because it was like exposing her naked to yes. the world mm -hmm. and that's exactly what Jenny answered me with because at first she says oh I don't know I've got so much bullying before I don't know if I want this out there but then yeah. she stopped and she said she came back to me she says mom yeah go, go you you write that because she says if we can help and this is was my same hope for for this book and us doing these signings yeah. and speaking engagements and, and interviews she says if we can help are both felt the same if we can help one individual if we can help one family right. then we've done our job exactly we've we've done what we wanted not, i don't like to say accomplished but we've done what we wanted to do yes. that was our our hope to reach out to autistic families and then as it further went along i wanted to reach out to the general public because yeah. i wanted to show what beautiful people they are in the workforce they, yes. they, they should be loud in the workforce and and then also as friends they're your best friends actually there is a company in germany who only just about only hire autistic individuals really? they say their work ethic their drive they come on time <laughs> you know, they're very, you know they are, they they said, are. yeah 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 so so that that was a big thing for us is we we that was our hope and i gotta tell you the hope is flying because it's it's um the story's getting out there and people are understanding it and it's been eye opening for both sides. So for us it just hits the old heartstrings because yeah. it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. And I, I, I think, you know, what you're doing is great. I think by helping people, it's great. You know, uh, you know, if, you know, 
one question I want to ask you, you know, this goes back to the beginning, you know, a lot of parents I noticed from, from working with people with, with disabilities or that have um, different types of conditions, a lot of parents tend to be in denial. It can be right in front of them and they don't want to accept it, that their child has something wrong with them. Now, you said you noticed around two years old that Jenny was showing symptoms of autism. Now, one, what were the symptoms? And two, you know, how did you become pro-advocate and what made you not be in denial? Okay. I just want to hit this while I don't go mental puzzle here, you know, when you're menopause, you're menopause. <laughs> but I just want to hit this when you said how parents are in denial. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. This, this doesn't happen in every couple, but a lot it does. Um, and Jenny's aware of all this, but um, it was not my ex for a reason, um, was he was very in denial. Actually, he was very verbally and physically abusive in denial um which ended up uh, having to we had to split yeah um I had to protect my daughter like I go like this I had to protect my daughter I had to protect yeah. my son I had to protect myself and Jenny would not be where she's at today if right. it, if I'd have stayed with him and I don't even know if any of us would be around right. um but the thing was is it was his denial of her autism I remember showing him stuff and trying to talk to him about it you know very kindly very nicely because I was worried about my daughter and yeah. he just flung it in my face and then other stuff I don't want to get into that but it's just he was in denial and I even remember the psychiatrist who um was trying to explain to him about it um, because of the court case that went in he had to leave his door he was so afraid he had to leave his door open and he had the receptionist on standby to call somebody because wow. my ex just wasn't understanding it I'm not saying it goes that far but very in denial and yeah. I hear of stories of women or men you yeah. know, it could be either or male or female yes where I don't want to segregate it to one but where there that denial is there Okay, so then you asked, sorry, I had to get that out first. Oh, I went, yeah. sorry, I went Canadian. I had to get that out first. <laughs> um, but, but the first thing I saw, um, what happened um, is after Jenny was really sick, um, after vaccination, and like we just about lost her, her white blood count was so out of whack that the doctor said, I, I've never, I, I don't even know what to tell you what this is. I can't tell you what it is. But her white blood count, I've never seen it so out of whack. They thought it was spinal meningitis, but it wasn't. Yeah. And then the pediatrician asked me, well, was there anything different? And I just said, well, she got her vaccination and she just looked at me and she goes, well, I believe she's had a reaction from it. So what had happened was the Jenny that we knew before. Yeah. Jenny was yeah. very mini me. Poor child. <laughs> <laughs> she, was, <laughs> she was very outgoing. She was starting to say words. She'd go to anybody. Beautiful. Like eye contact. Didn't matter who picked her up and very sociable, very, you know, very extroverted. Yeah. And then after she got it, sick and after all that, the Jenny that I knew, and as she started to, you know, get a little bit, she was gone. Wow. Her words were gone. Um, there was no eye contact. Um, so you're talking about signs. And back then, I didn't yeah. know it was autism, but these are the traits I was getting. I never yeah. heard of it before. Um, she put her head down, grunt and push you for food. Sorry, Jenny, but I got to grunt and push you, push you for, for, for food. Um, she would be in her own bubble and she'd always play with the exact same thing. And then she'd line things up, line things up, line things. And if you took anything out of the lineup, Ooh, the fit was on. And like right. I was saying at grocery stores going down, everything routine, very routine. Everything had to be routine, had to go on the same stepping stones on stones. When we went for walks, had to go down the same aisles, had to drive the same way. Everything had to be routine. Um, and then the five senses, very sensitive food, like touch. She could only eat certain things. Right. And then sound. She couldn't handle very loud noises. And even nowadays, sometimes with sound, she can't handle if it's really, really yeah. loud. Um, so my voice is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, she, sometimes she goes, you're kind of loud. I went, oh, sorry. Um, so, and then, because um, uh, I remember one time we were sitting on the beach and we were, you know, she's just little and we were playing in the sand and that. And all of a sudden her head just went and she looked up into the sky. Of course, I'm looking, I don't see anything. And then about a minute later, along comes this plane. And it's like she heard the sound of the plane coming. They're very acute. Their hearing is very, very cute. That's why sound and noise and, and that is bad. 
And then playing. Um, she just didn't, she didn't want to communicate. She didn't want to play with anybody and anybody took anything out and she didn't know how to socialize properly. She didn't want to, didn't want to socialize. The fits were so bad. This is anywhere. This was in malls. This was it at home. This was at daycare. This everywhere. She would fling herself on the ground. She would bite herself, hit herself, scratch herself, push other people away. And uh, I would have to, I don't know how many times a day I would have to put Jenny in sort of like a lukewarm bath for me and it might help others but for me this really helped jenny and i just lightly splashed the water on her and it just calmed her it oh, eased her really. calm it settled her down i think that's why jenny likes the water so much too jenny is a water gal um she's like a dolphin in the water she loves loves the water but that's how i got to settle down got to settle her down and over the years with my dream team as i call them and everything yeah. we worked with her and what we did at home with her Jenny started communicating. I remember one thing I told the daycare worker, I said, all I'd love to hear Jenny say is, hi, mom, how are you? You oh, know, and, and 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 then when she did it, her and I both started to cry. But, oh. uh, well, we all started crying. but the thing was, and then she started uh, the communication. Then she was starting to be able to socialize. The fit started to, to settle. The routine, yeah, she still has a routine, but where she was then to where she is now, People that have worked with her before or knew her before, they go, this is Jenny? Because it's such a difference. And now she's, yeah. more the, she's the nice, calm, you know, reserve, and it's me. I'm the hyper one all over the place. I said, I think you rubbed off on me. So, <laughs> but it's amazing just to see the journey and everybody that worked with her. Yeah. To see Jenny blossom like out of the, you know, like how a caterpillar blossoms into this beautiful butterfly just to see and all the colors that came with it it was it's just um that's why I want to do a movie about her life that's why I want I would like you to I think that's a great idea but the true story of it to show the connections of what you go through um and and just be able for people to visualize that because you can talk about it visualize it yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. So that's, you know, with Jenny, it was just to see her blossom from that and and to see where she, she's at now. I mean, it's to me, it's a statement. <laughs> yeah. And I find, too, that some people, their child gets diagnosed and they think that's it. OK, they're diagnosed. There's no improvement that can be made. You know, okay, I, you know, they try one or two things. Oh, it didn't work. You know, this is how it's going to be. But people have to realize that there is hope that, you know, with the proper care, the proper treatment, the proper support, like you have your dream team, the group of people that knew how to work with Jenny the right way, were able to yeah. help her excel to a level where she now could accomplish anything she puts her mind to. So, yeah, pe- you know, I think parents and caretakers have to realize that don't give up just because a doctor diagnoses the, the person with autism and says they're at a specific level, either if they're low, medium, high, there is hope to excel and to improve the area of autism that they have. That you know, you've mentioned something. You mentioned something very, Stacy. You're so good. You mentioned <laughs> something very. Well, that's why you are where you're at today. Um, you you mentioned so now I. This is what I give to parents as well, to autism children, but I also give this to actors because, as you know, as actors, you can have be on a very high and then you're going very low. You can be booking like crazy, addition like crazy, and then there's nothing. Right. I have people who both the autistic world, the, the actor's world, they put this on their fridge. Another thing is the four piece. Yes. A, a parent can never, ever give up. Mm-hmm. I lost and I didn't lose my life because some say that I lost my life because I no 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 Mm-mm. your life changes it goes in a different direction like you said with your epilepsy and that yeah but you've got to keep passionate yes you've got to be positive about yes. it you've mm-hmm. got to persevere yes and big time you've got to have patience yes. my my mom always used to say to me when I was young and I used to go oh brother would you quit saying that patience <laughs> is a virtue she it is say that and it it so is so I say this to autistic families and I say it to actors remember your passion remember why you started acting in the first place do not let that flicker die the yeah. same with a parent 
let that passion of your love of your child never let that light flicker out you got to be there for their whole life yes it doesn't stop you've got to be their whole life yes positive take the negative and turn it into a positive so like I said, did we go through a lot of negative trials and tribulation? Yes. But I tried to take the positive. I mean, you're human. There are some times it's going to, uh, but you keep going full speed ahead. Yes. Perseverance is big. Yes. Um, you have to persevere. You are going to go through stuff with doctors. You're going to go through stuff with the school system. You're going to go through stuff. That's where you have to perse- persevere and be assertive, but not be aggressive, uh, assertive. Um, and, and, and yeah, and, and I think, you know, that patience that we talked about patience is, is, is a virtue, but we're human. Um, yes it's it's hard sometimes but uh i tell you you learn a lot from people with disabilities or what for me personally i learned a lot from jenny with um with with her autism i learned a lot about becoming an actor in older age but i also learned a lot about uh being in a eight-year uh breast cancer survivor warrior but i learned about breast cancer oh, thank you <laughs> i learned about breast cancer and i learned about how to be there for others and yeah. how to pay it forward, not only with the autism, but pay it forward with the um, with the press, breast cancer scenario. And I plan to write a book if I ever find time, but I want to do a serious, but a humorous side of breast yeah. cancer and how I took humor to get me along my journey with, with breast cancer and try to take the negative that people see it as into, into a positive. So yeah, okay. amazing how those, that it goes all in, in different avenues of your life. It does, it really does. Now I have a question for you. Now, people don't realize the amount, we talked a little about this in the beginning. People don't realize the amount of stress that a caretaker goes through. Like we, you know, I didn't even realize until later on in my life. And then, you know, when, when I was growing up with my parents, you know, you don't really think about what your parents go through until later on in life. And I never thought about how, what their struggles was of taking care of a child with a disability. And then when I got older, I saw when I had gotten married, you know, the amount of stress my husband endured and my children, because they worried and they cared about me. And they, like we were talking about that magic wand, they wanted to put that magic wand over me and stop it, but they just couldn't, you know? So, you know, you try to be there as a caretaker, you do anything you can to help them. You do everything you can to support them. You give them all the love and guidance you can. You give them the reassurance and you give them you give them the, the strength saying you could do anything you want, that positive reinforcement. You know, you're there every step of the way for them. But at the same time, it also can be very draining because you're always worrying about the person. You're always thinking about, okay, where are they right now? What are they doing? Are they okay? You know, are they doing the right thing? If they take medication, did you take your medication? Blah, 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 blah. You're always thinking about every, their whole life, but you have a life of your own. So yeah. their life becomes your life. And now you have two lives to balance when you should only have one life. But, yeah. you know, but it's not that your parent or a caretaker and it's just not going to stop because you love that person and you you're there yeah. for them. So yeah. how do you go through not burning out the caretaker burnout? How did you avoid not burning out? Like for people who are caretakers, I, I talked to so many people and I was a caretaker for three of my relatives. How do you not burn out? Like how do how do you live your life? Because you cannot take care of Jenny unless you care for yourself and give yourself what you need. So how did you balance the two? Yeah, and that's that's a good question because that that is that is a hard one. And you have to be able to do it because you brought this child into the world. This is your baby, this is your child. Um, I've seen people just let them go and put them in homes or stuff like that. I, 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 I'm not built that way. I'm not right. here this way. And it's, you know, it's funny you should say this because I remember we were in a mall and my mom was with me. My mom, God bless her soul. She's gone, but, um, she was a very loving, caring parent, but Jenny ended up having one of her fits and I had all my stuff with me, you know, with the cloth and that, cause I cooled her down the wetness and stuff. And I was yep. taking care of it. And it was a major fit and my mom, and she wasn't trying to be embarrassed, she just wanted to get us out of there because people were staring at people. And she, mm-hmm. when we got to the car, she just looked at me and she says, oh my God. She said, you were calm. You didn't let anybody that people were saying, she heard what people were saying and you just took care of your baby. She And you just took care of that little girl. Yeah. Without thinking of any, and then, and then she said, but it's funny, well, this question you just asked, she said, 
you have to go through that every day, so many times a day. And she looked at me and, and she said, I couldn't do it. And I said, well, mom, when it's put in front of you, you take Jenny and put me in Jenny's body. I says, you find ways to do it. Exactly. So in coping with that, because it's like we said, and what I talked about earlier is you cannot take of your child or you might have other children in the family. And for me, I was also then a single parent when the big mainstream of her autism came. You cannot take care of them if you're not taking care of yourself. Right. So you have to make sure your mentally mindset sound and your body's sound. That's why respite was big time yeah and when I got respite I made sure I took the the right avenue with respite I made sure I took care of myself in that time so what I used to do is I used to make sure I catch up on sleep right. or I got myself into sometimes doing uh journaling mm -hmm. um, great. and I also yeah and I also would um do um uh yoga because i worked out mm -hmm. um i found working out was very th ther therapeutic i would uh I'd yoga pilates even just you know kind of meditating just taking time <laughs> mm -hmm. to sit down and just close your eyes and listen to your breath right i'm doing it right and just to just to breathe right yeah. just just to breathe you have to figure out or what i had to do is figure out ways to ease my calm because yeah. You're, you're rushing in 80 mils and I'm a go-go. Um, ask Jenny. Sometimes I just mm. recently had um, really big major nose surgery, uh, mm. not for vanity. Um, I needed uh, both my nostrils inside reconstructed to breathe. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And oh my God, that's an invasive surgery. At one point I was telling her and my friends at Tim Kimberly, go just chop my head off because I can't stand <laughs> And I, I would rather have my breasts removed again than go through that. Like that's how invasive it was. Yeah. But, they had to get me to stop, to quit being a go-go. And I was a go-go when I've always has been. And even more so when you have a child with autism. Right. I had a young single, I had a young teenage boy being a single parent. I had to learn to stop. I had to learn to take time to breathe. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Because the main thing is you cannot look after anybody else if, if you're sick yourself. And right. that's a big thing because... Autistic children, and I don't mean this in a mean way, but they take a lot. They're a 24-hour yeah. job. And if you have a regular job, if you have other children who need your help as well, and Kirstie, Chris was a teenager, um, you have to take care of yourself first. Mm -hmm. And you have to do it in the way where you take those respite care hours. You have to take time for yourself. Right. You have to take time for yourself to breathe, to relax, relaxation. And just do things that you find walking, I find therapeutic. I find running very therapeutic. Um, and also you've got to give yourself a little bit of a social life to yeah. sit down and talk with someone, even to release. Right. You are compressing stuff that's going on with an autistic child and what you're going through and you're keeping it here. You're keeping it here. You're not expressing it out. Yeah. You really need to go through consultation to express it out. I had a couple of friends that were great. That I just, I just yeah. let it all out and what was going on in, in my day. If you can do that with a spouse, great. If you don't have to do it with a spouse, do it with a friend. If you find you've got to go a little bit further with it, you got to need someone professionally, but you got to let that out. I think uh -huh. you really need to speak with someone that's going to give you an unbiased opinion that will have a good ear and let you talk and get those repressed emotions out. Yeah. So there's a lot of different avenues you can do, but the thing is doing it. Yes. Uh, the type of personality that I have and the go-go that I am, and I have to do everything for my family. I can only get, um, you got to let that go. Yes. You let go. And also, oh, how can I say this? Um, I like to always give and always be there and always be there for everybody. But you have to learn how to take. You have to live, learn to be good to your yourself. Yeah. Not just giving to others. You have to give to yourself. And when you do have an autistic child or child with disability or whatever, you have to remember that you're a person too. You have a life too. Um yes. and when I went into acting and I wasn't going to, it was my son who got me into it. And I wasn't going to do it. And he knew that I was doing so much for Jenny with her autism, so much for him and things, you know, he went through, he said, you're not doing anything for yourself. 
Right. So that was therapeutic for me to act. Yeah. Um, very therapeutic. Um, the acting, writing that book was very therapeutic. And this is the thing. And we talked about this. We just briefly talked about this. Your child always is going to have this disability. They're going to live through this. And and I know, I, I'm sure parents out there listening with, that are autistic are going, yeah, they worry about what's going to happen when they're gone. Jenny yeah. says to me at times, I wish you could live forever, mom. I said, oh, that would be nice. I'd like to live forever. <laughs> um, but the thing was, um, it's when they turn adults, when you're not there anymore. anymore. Right. The help, I don't know, here in Canada, it's like when they turn 18, 19, it's just boom, help's gone. It's getting better for certain things, but... It's similar in America. Oh, so it scares parents. They worry. There's oh, yeah. worry parents have, and it's a big one for parents. It's something that need, really needs to be addressed, you know, and, you know, you know, unfortunately, when a parent does pass and then, you know, a, and dependent on some, you know, I know a, a lot of autistic individuals, they are high functioning like you. And what they do is that there is a facility, you know, more like a like a like a 55, let's say a 55 and older community type thing where it's a autistic community where they go, they have their 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 little apartment. Their they, housing area. Their housing, yeah. yeah. And it's all autistic individuals and they go to work. They come home, you know, and they are, care you know, people watch over them in case they need anything. Yeah. And they're also surrounded by people like yourself that you could relate to. Now, the problem is, is that I know in America, these things cost a lot of money, you know, yep. and that's the, where the problem sets in is that you can, you can set your child up, but it's very expensive. And what happens if you don't have the funds? So this isn't, this is a question that really needs to be addressed, but you know, they do have a lot of communities in, in America for people that have, you know, different, you know, um, disabilities, or they have different types of conditions. But the question is, you know, financially, you know, where, where is the help? How could they find it? And how easily can people get it? You know, because, you know, a person, uh, you know, you could work all your life and you could have a, a good amount of money set up for your daughter, but that's, that could be, that could be gone within a several yes. years, you know, depending on how high the costs are. So, you know, I think, you know, that's an, that's an issue that really needs to be more talked about by. Oh, by, for sure. And yeah. we find too, a lot of times there's not enough areas of those type of housings here. There's yeah. not enough. They are, there is a bit of funding towards it, but there just seems to be more because what, what a lot of autistic people get here, they get like a social services because they're called permanent disability. Mm -hmm. But oh my God, I don't know if you've heard about the housing in Vancouver, but it's very expensive to live here. And I don't know how individuals make it, whether you be autistic, whatever type of disability you have, even if you're in a wheelchair, whatever. Yeah. How do they expect the person to live that doesn't even go anywhere near paying for the rent. How are they supposed to do food? How are they supposed to, although I will say here, um, they do get like, um, people with disabilities don't have to pay for the medical. Um, yeah. They get a medical card. Um, they get, you get the bus card and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's where I will say it's really good, but there needs to be more housing because as we said, autism's on the rise, disabilities yes. are on the rise. So they need to get more facilities open open there because we were just talking to someone the other day there is such a big wait list that yeah. it's just absolutely insanity so what are our parents supposed to do as we get older but i'm a young 66 i hope to be around for a while um what do we what do we do as we get older and we still don't have a area for for our kids yeah no that's a question that needs to be addressed and and, and yeah. it's scary you know um it is scary you know yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm sure, you know, they are, I, I know in America, we do have different organizations, but I don't know what those organizations offer and how much they offer, you know, to people with autism and what organ, you know, what type of communities they have available to them. But, you know, that is definitely something that I think our governments, you know, in both countries need to really look at, you know, and yeah. that needs to be definitely addressed. Now, Jenny, yeah. I want to ask you now for coping with autism now yeah, how did you learn to cope with it you know like any illness any disorder any disability is it's very hard to cope with it so what would if you had to really tell people who are listening with autism you know how to cope with their autism you know what advice would you give them 
Oh boy. Uh, good question. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me think how, how I cope with it. Well, I guess like definitely the stuff like realize that you have it and it's not a bad thing. Love yourself for who you are for that for sure. Um, and just, yeah, learn about yourself. Uh, what are your pros? What are your condo fit? And just um, try to, I guess, practice. Cause like what my mom says with the senses, like, like hearing or touch or like light those are always struggles yeah the beginning with me, but you know because I knew about the issues and went head on and facing them and dealing them I eventually you know have gotten better with it it's not perfect I'll always have those issues but I found ways to like adapt with it and find like a balance to like for my autism and like things like that I hope that made sense I think no, does. Jenny I think um her writing like Jenny does with her writing, like she's writing her books or she's writing other books or she's doing short films that are animated, like Sparkle Loves Bacon. And and I think that gives Jenny a coping me mechanism oh, yeah. because it's something that she really loves to do. Yeah. And and she draws to that and she loves to read. Um, so the I therapy. think those, yeah, I think those do you do it? Does that make sense? That yeah. seems to yeah, like, yeah, definitely like following your passions and doing things you love. It's like a kind of inner therapy for you because you love it. It's your passion. It just makes you feel better at the end of the day. So yeah, those things too. And I've I, I've said to you, you know, you should really journal too. She gets so busy with that, so much she's doing that she goes, "Who's got time to journal? I'm trying to get." Over. So I think because she does, I think because she does all that. It, I think that's what I don't know. Writing is like a therapy. What I see from the outside looking in. Yeah. Well, no, no, I would definitely say like doing the things I love, writing and drawing. If I do get sad or upset, those are the first things because they're a way to express yourself and show people this is how I'm feeling. It's it's an art of expressing yourself. And it's yeah, like, definitely. And she likes to go for walks and and to bike ride, and I I think that you know I think people when we walk or we bike ride and and swimming you know she likes to do stuff that, that, that just takes your mind takes your mind off of yeah. whatever's yeah. you know or let it go or let it go yeah let it go <laughs> <laughs> now i'm going into song uh, stacy goes okay we gotta end this interview janet's starting to sing <laughs> yeah. i like your singing by the way <laughs> now jenny show me your books one more time show everybody sees your books and tell us a little about your books also so that people know what they yeah, are yeah that's a good yes yeah. <laughs> Hey, so uh, th these are my books here. Uh, Dysnomia. Okay. This is the first one here. Dysnomia Outcast on a Distant Moon. And then Dysnomia Home Lies in Your Heart. I'm currently working on the third one right now. And what this series is about, it's about this girl named Layla who becomes the very first female to be royal commander of her hometown. Mm. But there's this bad guy named Nylerm who's attacking the town for reasons unknown. So when her and her friends try to go stop him, he traps him in a back hole and drives him off a cliff and into this whole secret underground world and that's oh, when wow that sounds very <laughs> cool and then actually her, this book went to disney and john laster saw it back then when he was with disney and he said she's got to get this made into a, a trilogy either movies or or, or or tv series and she actually has of course here's the proud <laughs> mommy or jenny's so humble she's actually been referenced to jk rowling in that not that her style is the same as jk rowling but it's just that and a lot of people have said to jenny is layla kind of you because you got this woman who was going up against this guy who didn't want her to be royal commander but she she wanted to show that she could do anything a boy could do. So kind of, and Jenny never thought per se of that, but it's kind of, people have asked her more about that. And I thought, geez, maybe that think, kind of correlates with Jenny and going through her autism. Yeah. I think sometimes I think when we write, we subconsciously, we put a little bit of ourselves in the character when we write fiction and we don't even realize it, but we're, it's either who we are or who we want to be, you know, and then you don't realize it, but then as your character that you read, they kind of show some traits of the individual, the author itself sometimes, a lot of times. Yeah, actually. yeah. yeah. that, that makes, yeah. yeah, that you, yeah, that makes, makes total sense. And I feel mm -hmm. like just the character she has in the book and, and when we have our book signing, she's, um, illustrated her own bookmarks with some of her characters and yeah. and it was supposed to be a book from what ages eight it is technically YA for market target wise however it is a book for everyone I've had people ages six to 60 read it and enjoy themselves again it's kind of like uh, JK Rowling's Harry Potter's that way where that's also like targeted to a young adult but lots of people of different ages read Harry Potter and yeah and it's male and female so yeah that's oh nice uh, 
kind of fuzzy. <laughs> so she's really, so it's really come along and it's, it's, it's really cool to see the following and it's not just here. There's people in the States, people in Europe, people, uh, it's just been, it's been, it's, I'm just so happy for her. I yes, guess that's what I can see. Yes. Very happy for her. I am very happy for you too. Now, where can people find this book? First of all. Okay. Where you show your, yeah. Oh, right. Well, these ones, uh, we, we, well, for Canada, you can get them like any Indigo store. Uh, there's Barnes and Norbles. You can get them there too. And there's Amazon and you can also get it from us as well. As from yeah. Us. We've got our own website that you can get them from us. And what we do is we sign them and then, and then we'll send them, send them out to people, but Very Barnes cool. and Noble, um, Amazon. Um, and here it's really big as Indigo mm -hmm. and chapters. I don't know if you have that in the States um, or like we say from our website, there's a place called library world in the States. There's a place called Coco in the States. There's um, uh, we have a place here in Canada, but they will send it out red toque. Uh, T U Q U E. So there's there's places like that, and my book is um is the same. You can get it at the same places, and I have my own own website. Put it a little too. higher so people can see. Oh, the sorry, book. I didn't know if you had anything more to ask to Jenny, so I didn't want to go. Hey, here's my book. That's, that's okay. <laughs> put it up. Put it up. Okay. Okay. Oh, and Jenny's is also award winner too. Yeah. And actually, um, this um indie book awards, I was actually supposed to go to New York and get the award, but I, oh. I couldn't make it. But so so my book is called The Autistic Author and Animator. And my book is all around Jenny's journey, but it's through my eyes. So it's, right. it's through a parent's eyes. And uh basically I'll just really read the little quick here. It says Janet Wamley, Janet Wamsley's daughter Jenny diagnosed with autism, faced many challenges on the way to reaching your dream of becoming a professional animator and published author. This heartfelt story relays the importance of perseverance, courage, and strength within a mother-daughter bond as their journeys intertwine, revealing a mother who was her daughter's rock right from the beginning and did everything in her power to help her daughter see the light at the end of the tunnel. The autistic author and animator is a striking narrative that illustrates one's full potential a testament that autism is no barrier to success and fulfillment. And Excellent. there's just something I wanted to read here out of it. It's very short and sweet, but I just really feel it would give your viewers and yourself. Um, this is something that her name was Lisa Balcom and she was Jenny's per se case manager, education assistant in high school. And she wrote Lisa, Jenny's case manager had been told Jenny came with a label. I don't like that word label. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and though she agreed that Jenny didn't talk much, she maintained that Jenny listened very well. Lisa said when Jenny spoke, she spoke with purpose and wisdom, choosing her words carefully. She also said that Jenny took a different path, not the one expected. She would choose her path carefully. Oh, be too steep or treacherous, Jenny forged on. One perspective that Lisa shared about Jenny, one that is my favorite, was that she thought the label should have said, the best is yet to come. Lisa added that she was very thankful to have known Jenny and that Jenny reminds her each and every day that, and got this italicis, a story is not written until the author writes it. And Jenny is a great writer. Yes. <laughs> I was just always okay. taken from her, her writing, writing that, because you know, it's funny when you look at Jenny's name on the book, because a lot of people go, is your last name really Story or is that just something for your writer? But her name is Story, S-T-O-R-Y. So it's kind of funny when people look at her, her, her books that, you know, that is her real name. Right. So, That's awesome. That is so awesome. So basically my book was written to, like I, we spoke before, it was basically written to be there for other people. Take it like you're sitting across the table from me uh, and we're having a coffee or tea. And I'm just relating how we took the positive of autism. I took it by the horns and we went full speed ahead. So it goes right from when she was born to issues before I even knew to finding out what autism was, to going through the thing with a pediatrician, finding a, uh, a with a general practitioner, but also where we went to the specialist because the specialist is what they told me. And then just it infiltrates with family and with the dream team and, and how she, you know, so there's a lot of different things that are, that are in the book, but it's readable. It's not the type and it's engaging. It's not just all the technical medical jargon. Yeah. Um, and even with that, I try to make it so it's readable um, and that you can understand it. So it's not too intense and it's just, oh, that's going over my head. Right. Right. So that's what I'm being told for people that read it too. That's yeah. awesome. I'm very proud of the two of you. You guys have come a oh, long way, you. you know, oh, 
I love the fact that you've written a book, you know, and explaining it how you see it through your eyes. Because even when my daughter wrote that article through her eyes, you really it's it's an eye opener when you when you see it through someone else's eyes. And I love the fact of all the accomplishments that you achieved, how you went from from having, you know, um, you know, very low function autism and bringing it to high functioning, then going and getting your degrees and then making a career for yourself. And now you are an accomplished author. It's amazing. I I am so proud of you. You you have uh, have accomplished unbelievable amounts of, of uh, accomplishments, and I I am stunned by everything. People without autism don't even do a quarter of what you do, you know. And look what you've done, you know. It's amazing. Congratulations. Well, I think we we feel the same Thank about you. you. We feel the same <laughs> about you, Stacy, and everything you've done and everything you've told us before the interview and and now during the end interview. And I I just want to say to people out there, this essence of Stacy <laughs> is what the world should be about. People in the world should be like Stacy and the essence that she's had because everything you've said today has really rung with me, and I'm sure it has with Jenny. And it's been an inspiration. You're a very beautiful uh, woman inside and out. And to see all you know the books that you're writing and all the accomplishments that you have and awards that you're getting and bestsellers and that, I mean, it's a it's a statement to you. And what a role model you are for people with epilepsy, with a role model for the public in in general and for your own children. Um, they sound like role models to you and, and vice versa. And I find that very parallel with with Jenny and I. So I just I just had to had to say that. Thank you so much. I, I, I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Now, before we go, I want you to tell everybody because you haven't told them yet what your website is. Where can they find you on the Internet? OK, OK, I'll go first. My yeah. website is www janetwall so j a n e t w a l dot wixite which is w i x s i t e dot com backward slash autism connects do you want me to tell them yours too can yeah you, you okay can, yeah, it's like the same thing but it's like with my name so yeah and it's double it's www dot jenny jenny story there's no e in story and it's j-e-n-n-y so dot and the same wix site w-i-x-s-i-t-e dot com slash dysnomia sometimes yeah. i have to look at the book to spell oh. it right it's d-y oh you want us. you yeah. say it yeah it's, it's a D D Y S N O M I A. yeah d-y-s-n-o-m-i-a and then there's another one with the same thing, but instead of dysnomia, it's um Jenny Stories, which is J E N Y S T O R I E S, where that's like all my animation stuff and like my demo reel and um uh, graphic novels and that. So yeah. And you can find us if you look on the internet, you go Janet Wamsley yeah. or you go Jenny Story and poof, everything's yeah. everything pops up. Um yeah. Instagram, so. Twitter, uh Facebook. Facebook page. Facebook. Uh, we're trying to think of unfortunately years. someone broke into my facebook page oh. pages uh, in the last year so my actor page went our book we had a great following our book page um also um my personal page which i had tons of followers and the sad thing is you almost have to take a picture of who your, all your followers are i could i can't i couldn't remember everybody so we've had to start all over because this person who did it has completely blocked blocked me out and our book page especially you know that was a that was a big we one, but we, one. Yeah, we got a new one. It's, it's slowly going. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So if you also look on, on the internet too, or you Google that we'll, we'll come up there. Yeah. All right. That sounds great. Thank you so much guys for being on this show. You have, you know, provided us with such tons of information, such hope, and given so many people today a lot of wisdom, you know, to understand what autism is, to understand that there is a lot out there that people could actually, life does not end because you have autism, you know, life, you know, the moment you, 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 you are diagnosed with, with autism, it doesn't mean a thing. It's, it's the support, the love, the, the help that you receive and just being, like you said, patience, perseverance, you know, anything can be accomplished. As long as you set your mind to it and you have a constructive goal, anybody can reach for the stars and actually touch one if they are determined to. 
You know, life does not end because you have autism and you, my dear, are an example of that. And I commend you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank and you. And thank for, you. Oh, you go. I was just going to say what well, mom was saying was thank you also for having us and you're showing to come and talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're, you're, you're beautiful. It was such a joy to be um, interviewed by you. Your questions <laughs> are right on and your just your inter interpretation through things you've gone through your life it really kind of you know it's paralleled with with our lives as well so we appreciate you having us uh you're very welcome and thank you so much for coming on the show i think you're going to help a lot of people just with this interview so thank you so much i appreciate everything you guys have a great day thank you you too